I'm going to do a commission piece and I know that this is a birthday gift for one of my client's children. So I'm going to do a triptych and each canvas is 12 inches by 16 inches. And the brief that I've been given is to use pinks, silvers, greys, whites. And I need to do um, balloon dips. So this is going to be a bit different to what you normally see. I'm really excited. So let's see what we can create. OK, so I have my brush and I have my different tones I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use two different tones for this base. And I'm just going to freestyle the base. What I mean by that is I'm just going to use the paints and I'm just going to add different tones to the base to create a bit of depth. And I'm just going to use probably a couple of tones to do that. And I'm going to just do it with my paintbrush. And one tip that I learned more recently is as you're doing that kind of uh, freestyle piece, if your paint um, is drying a lot quicker than what you'd hope for. So basically, if it's drying before you can kind of blend it in with the other tone, just spray a little bit of water over the top and that that will be enough moisture to help you blend your paints in. So I'm just going to go across each panel now and add some different tones. As I said, the two different tones I'm going to use. Um, and I'm going to just use my paintbrush to create those pieces. And I'm going to go over each panel with just those two tones to create a little bit of blending as well. And I just do that. As you see, I'm just layering those paints on the canvas and then freestyling with a brush. And as I go from one dark colour to a lighter tone and go over the edges, I can basically blend those in. And as I said, if it dries out before you kind of finish that piece, feel free just to add a little bit of spray of water that will just add that that little bit of moisture that you need. It's really important that you have a look, step back and kind of see the, the depth and the perspective that you're creating. It's actually a lot of fun doing a base, a base coat uh, freestyle because you can kind of control the depth and the tones that you're using uh, to create that piece. So I have I, I've had a lot of fun doing this because it's very different to what I'd normally do. But it's just allowed me to have a little bit more control over that that base coat and the tones that I'm able to create by blending those different tones in with each other. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this part. Let me take you in for a close up just so you can see how I've used the different tones and how I've used uh, like a blending technique just to add a bit of depth, add a bit of contrast. And that's my base coat completed. For the base coat, I've used two Amsterdam tones. Um, so I've used those and just blended them in just to get that depth and that contrast. OK, so I'm going to use some iridescent violet blue by Paybo and I'm going to just add some lines on each of the panels. Um, I'm going to do them in different directions because, again, I just wanted to create some depth. Um, I wanted to create some focal points in the piece um, to, to kind of create that um line the eye will see as you span across each three panels so i'm going to do this on each of the canvases i have sped up the video just so you don't have to sit there too long um, and watch me do this but i'm kind of doing um circular kind of oval um lines on each piece just to create a bit of sparkle and a bit of depth on each canvas um so the idea is once i've done the base colors and the kind of some shaping on each of the canvases i will then go over the top of each panel and do balloon dips in the the pink and the silver tones it's really interesting sometimes just to 
hand paint and freestyle your base. You don't always have to always do a, a fluid art base. Um, but this just gives some different technique, some different texture, and it gives an overall different look to the piece that you're trying to create. And I've hope, I hope you enjoy seeing me do this. And this also gives some time for you to be able to step back, take a view of the piece from different angles as well, just to see what you think and add little bits in. It's almost like the embellishment that you see at the end of a piece as well. But again, this is just using some different tones for some blending and to create different lines, um, different shapes um, and an overall different look to a piece that you'd normally create. And what I would say is using just what you would call pink, there are so many different tones that you can use. And it's really, really fun to be able to um, do a combination of those tones. You know, you can have some lighter and some darker tones. And you'll see in this piece, in the middle of a canvas here that I'm doing now, I've got some darker tones. And I'm just going over with some lighter um, shimmer tones and then on each end in the middle of the canvas you can see I've gone for a lighter tone with some darker lines on the edges um, and again that just creates that movement across the piece um, using light and dark will always create that movement and that depth that you're looking for so that's what I've learned more recently is doing some blending and ensuring that there are different tones across a piece will draw in that eye movement and allow that person that's looking at it to look at different parts of it. It's a piece that when, when you look at it first time, you'll see one thing. And then when you look at it another time, you'll see something very different. And that's what I really like. And this is going in a bedroom. So it's quite a calm, um, serenity kind of piece. It's, it's meant to uh, be very calm, although it's for a children's room you know it's fun because it's pink and it's silver and, and that's what the child likes but it also creates that kind of atmosphere of calmness as well and i hope you'll agree that especially when you see the final piece adding some lines and some textures using some different tones does allow that movement across those panels you know this is a triptych so it's a three panel piece I think you could separate each panel and have a very unique piece on its own. But adding them together will just create that eye movement from one panel to the next panel to the next panel. And again, I'm creating that by using the different tones. And by doing those tones, I'm creating depth. By using the lines, I'm helping to move that eye across each piece and using that as a movement focus. So... That's just my little take on it. That's just my little bit of advice when I'm, I'm doing things like this. Um, I hope it's useful and I'll show you what I'm doing next. And you'll see that I'm adding lines in a completely different direction as well. And that's to allow that eye, when, when you're looking across the piece and you're getting that movement, it's allowing it not just to focus on that one movement in one direction. It's almost to create the kind of allowing you to kind of explore that piece and, and see what you can find. So I'm just adding those lines um, just to create different movement across the different pieces. Okay, let me show you what I can see from my angle. So for me, I've prepared my base and now the fun part, I'm gonna start doing the balloon dip. So I'll show you the colors that I'm gonna use. Okay, so I'm gonna try some ready mixed fluid paint from Arteza. And I've chosen the colors of silvers and pinks because this is the, the theme that I'm going with. I also have a couple of smaller sponges and I'm also going to use a balloon to, to do those balloon dips. So what I'm going to do is with my balloon, I'm going to do larger circles. So larger balloon dips across each part of the canvas. And then I'm going to use the sponges to dip in um, to some paint and create that sponge mottled effect across that piece. So let me leave you watching this. I hope you enjoy it. 
So what you will see is I am layering tones of paint on top of each other. And then I'm getting the balloon and literally just squashing it down. And that's the balloon dip. And that's creating the round circles that you see. And it will also, because the paints are layered, it will mix those paints as the pressure of the balloon is put onto the canvas and then lifted up again. It will create all different kind of designs in the middle as well, which is exciting because each one will be so, so different. So I'm going to go across each of the canvases and just puddle those um, paints up. I have six or seven different tones that I'm using and I'm using a different combination in each puddle that I'm creating because I want the piece to look completely different across each of the panels. I don't want each circle to be the same. So... I'm, you know, I'm just going with how I feel at the time. I'm going to put, you know, I'm, I'm looking constantly at the perspective of the, of the piece. I'm making sure that I'm not having too many big circles in one area. And as you'll see shortly, as I go through and use the sponges to do some smaller circles, that I'm just reflecting, looking back, making sure that I... Um, have a really good ratio and a really good perspective of that piece because again I want to make sure that the eye and the movement can flow all the way across so I'm going to do another one there another one there and you can see that I'm doing three or maybe four of the big circles on each part of the canvas um, I'm also using my torch to get rid of air bubbles these are ready mixed paints I have shook them well before I use them um, ready mixed paints there's still going to be some air bubbles so that's why I use my torch and I am wiping the balloon each time I dip because I'm using different tones I don't want to muddy those uh, those colors up so each time I do that balloon dip I'm just wiping the excess paint off the balloon before I dip again so as I go across the piece again you'll see me standing back just taking in what I'm doing I'm having a look to see what I'm doing and where I want my next circle to be. So as I said, because I'm using the balloon, I'm use, I'm basically looking to see where I want the next bigger circle. So I've, I've got four on one end. I've got, I'm going to have three big circles in the middle and maybe four or th three or four on the other end. I'm not going to have too many of the big ones. I'm going to do some smaller ones again because I just want to create that 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 calm feeling um i'm going to cover certain spots that just here i'm just going to cover that um kind of that joint where you know where each paint meets it's not tidy so i'm going to basically use the balloon dip to cover up that part of the of the background that i'm not too keen on so i'm just layering the paints as i go in the silvers and the pinks and I will just use the balloon to dip. There we go. And when you dip, you literally just push down as firm as you can and then raise it up in a steady motion. And that way you will ensure that you have maintained that circle. So I will torch as I go along because I don't want the air bubbles to just sit there and pop. I want to get rid of those as I go. So I think I'm just going to do the last couple of big, big circles now using the balloon dip. And then I'm going to go over to using the sponges and I'll use those sponges to create all smaller circles around those bigger ones. And this is when I'm going to be looking at the perspective of the piece. Um, and I want to create, I still want to create that movement across each piece of the panel. So I'd love to know what you think. Again, this is very different to what I normally do. Um, let's take you in for a closer look now. So as you can see, each one is different. I love the tones. I love that I, on the background, I have very different tones, light, dark, light, dark tones. So that's creating the depth. Okay, so I've poured some paint and I'm using my sponge and I'm literally just going to dab some circles all the way across the piece. Going back into the paint and then dabbing again just across the piece. 
you'll see that I step back quite a few times because I just want to make sure that, you know, what I'm creating is, you know, visually pleasing. This is going up on a wall. So I just want to make sure that where I'm putting those circles, it almost makes sense where I'm putting them. What other colour combinations do you think would look really good in a piece like this? So remember, right at the beginning, I just started off with a couple of tones and I blended those tones in to make the background. And then I used another couple of tones, the iridescent tones, just to add the lines to create that movement and that depth. And now I'm using a few different tones with the balloon dips and the circles that I'm creating there. So... Let me know what other colour combinations you think would really work well with something like this. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know what you think. Obviously, this technique isn't for everybody. But what I'm doing is I'm having a bit of fun. I'm using a different technique. I'm experimenting. And I'm just seeing what we can create. Art for me, especially fluid art, is so much fun. And, you know, I can honestly say hand on heart every time I go into my studio and I create a piece whether it's a piece that I'm just creating that I've been thinking about or it's a piece that I'm creating through a commission you know by request from somebody else I have so much fun um I can't stress enough that you know this this was my lifesaver throughout the pandemic throughout covid when things closed down I could go in and and be creative and um I hope you've been able to find your creative outlet as well and experiment and have fun that's that's the main thing for me so as you can see I am just going across each of the canvases with my smaller sponge and I'm just dabbing on those colors and, I, and I, I hope you agree that I feel like I've created a really, really nice piece. Um, you know, I really hope my client's going to be happy with it. I'm obviously going to show them before I varnish it because I can make some changes before I do that. But I'm stepping back just to get that perspective and just to just to see that where I'm putting those circles and those um, different colour tones, it makes sense for that overarching piece. Um, I'm really, really happy with this. I think I'm nearly finished. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think. Here is the close up. So, guys, these this is what I did. So I went across all the canvases with the with the sponge. I've uh, used my torch to get rid of some of the air bubbles and it's created like a mottled effect within those circles. You know, I think that really, really adds the texture and the depth to those circles as well. So I'm really, really pleased with how that's turned out. This is the dried version. Um, I love it. I, you know, maybe I'm biased because I've created it myself, but I really, really do love it. So please let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. And remember, it's all about having fun. And I hope that you do get that if you're creative yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. I really, really enjoy doing these and I hope you love seeing them too. And if you've got any comments or ideas, just drop them in the box. Have a great week. Take care. Bye.